Hey everyone, Kona Gallagher, host of And Then They Were Gone. Today, we're sharing something special with you. It's a preview from 48 Hours, one of the top true crime podcasts. I listen to this all the time because it's just one of those shows that you kind of grew up on. I mean, I know I did, and I'm sure a lot of you did as well. On the 48 Hours podcast, you'll hear award-winning CBS News correspondents investigate shocking murder cases and compelling real-life dramas from one of television's most watched true crime shows. I'm about to play you a clip from 48 Hours. While you're listening, follow 48 Hours on the Wondery app or wherever you get your podcasts. Okay, here's the clip. 48 Hours correspondent Peter Van Sant takes us back to the night of November 13th, 2022, to the University of Idaho, the scene of the now infamous and chilling murders of four young students. Listen in as Van Sant speaks with a few family members of the victims. Moscow will forever be known as a scene of one of the most tragic crimes in American history. There's still sort of a a darkness whenever you talk to people. It will be ever part of the university's history and the town's history. There are four very, very important names in this case. Kaylee Gonzalez, Madison Mogan, Zana Kronodal, and Ethan Chapin. And if you're gonna remember any names from this case, I ask that it be all four. My name is Olivia Gonzalez, and Kaylee was my little sister. Everybody's going to work, and you look out the window, and there's kids running down the street laughing, and you're just like, how can you be out there playing? My daughter's dead. You know, Kaylee Gonzalez is gone. Stop everything. Everybody in the whole world, stop. And everything just keeps going. My sister, Zana Kernodal, is one of the happiest, funniest people I've ever met. And I had the awesome privilege of growing up with her, and I still have a hard time coming to terms with the facts that it did happen. Frank Koberg is accused of stabbing these four University of Idaho students in the pre-dawn hours on November 13th, 2022. Uh, the murder weapon, which was a knife, has never been found. This is a type of survival knife. Brian Koberger did not make his own plea. The judge entered a plea for him of not guilty. Maximum penalties, life in prison, or the death penalty. Due to the nature of the crimes, the state of Idaho is seeking the death penalty. He was there to kill. He came in with a kit. I believe he had a kill Mm -hmm. kit. And you believe that everything right down to the implement of destruction, this large marine knife, that was all planned? All planned. It's inhumane. You wouldn't do these type of things to any living creature, let alone an innocent human being. In August of 2023, just six weeks before the murder trial of Brian Koberger was set to begin, he waived his right to a speedy trial. Should you want to begin? Absolutely. They would have to wait indefinitely for their day in court. I was really hoping that um, we could get this show on the road because uh, the not knowing, it just, it's agony. It's agony. Steve and Christy, the parents of Kaylee, haven't left anything to chance. After the judge issued a gag order to attorneys and law enforcement, quote, to preserve the right to a fair trial, they drilled down on their own investigation and are now sharing what they believe that investigation found. Steve says he believes transparency is the best path to justice. We're not going to just sit back and cross our fingers and pray that we're going to get justice. It has been a long and painful journey for the families of Kaylee Gonzalez, Maddie Mogan, Zana Kernodal, and Ethan Chapin. Do you ever dream of your sister? Yeah, I've had some dreams of her. Uh, There's times where I prayed and asked God to see her another time and I did, and 
just gives me some peace knowing that I know she's okay. Jasmine Kernodal, who is speaking for the first time, was a senior at Washington State University and lived only 15 minutes away from her younger sister, Zanna. Often mistaken as twins growing up, she says they were best friends. She just was always fun. She was uplifting, and she took any bad situation and turned it into a good one. Jeff, what did you love most about your daughter? Everything. <laughs> She cared about people. She was a people person. She cared about her friends just as much as, like, her family. For the first time in her life, Zanna had fallen in love with fellow student Ethan Chapin, a triplet who loved his siblings, boats, and working on a tulip farm. The sweetest kid ever. They were just two happy people, and... There's just seeing the videos and photos of them. You can just, like, tell how happy they are. They're just amazing together. Sadly, they will now forever be linked in death. On Sunday morning, November 13th, Zana's friends started calling Jasmine, saying something bad had happened on King Road. Jasmine rushed over to Zana's house. And while you're driving that eight nine miles over to the house. Are you trying to reach your sister then? Mm Mm-hmm. How many times did you call her? A lot. I called her a lot. I called Ethan a lot. Her next call was to her father. Jeffrey had been visiting Jasmine for Dad's weekend and was on his way home. So you answer the phone. What do you hear? I hear her kind of crying and just telling me to get back to Moscow and meet me at Santa's house. And... You know, my heart drops. Instantly, race back down there. The house was cordoned off and swarming with investigators. As soon as Jeffrey said he was Zana's father, he and Jasmine were escorted to the Moscow Police Department. And Jasmine, what does the officer say to you and your father? I don't, I don't remember exactly. Just that four people passed away. And that one was Anna. You know, the worst day of your life, this is your worst nightmare. It just happened, you know? What do you do? You can't do a damn thing. You can hear the rest of this episode on the 48 Hours podcast. And if you're looking for more, go behind the scenes with a new post-mortem series every Tuesday where 48 Hours correspondents and producers share their first-hand experiences reporting on the compelling cases they cover. You can also listen to 48 Hours ad-free by joining Wondery Plus in the Wondery app or on Apple Podcasts. The link to listen is in our show notes.